The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN. Hope everyone had a great holiday weekend, Christmas weekend. Back at it for a full week of trading, Monday through Friday, as we come into the new year, 2022. Uh, remarkable, folks. Five trading days left. We got a full trading week all the way through Friday, even on New Year's Eve. Uh, should see some low action, low volatility, excuse me, low volume. Doesn't mean low volatility, as we saw last week, man. Uh, boy, you back things up. It was quite a week, folks. You go from a price point, is that, yes, a price point of last Monday with a low price of 45.20. We are more than 200 S&P points above that level. You look where we are on the chart. You do have a tail back on December 16th. It got us to a high of 47.43. But when you talk about closes, you talk about opens, S&P is going to open with a record open this morning to kick off trading coming into uh, the new year. NASDAQ 100. Let me pull up those NQs. You're talking about a level that we're about 400 points off of the all-time highs. That all-time high back on November 22nd, 16,006, excuse me, 16,767. You're trading 16,374. You're positive by 75 points. Now, you back things up to last Monday in the NASDAQ 100. How about 900 points? You're talking about almost 1,000 points, folks. You're only 120 points away from 1,000 points off of the lows that we had just last Monday. Dow up 70 points right now, 35,902. You're about 500 points away from all-time highs. Russell, quite a different story as has been the case. You got the Russell right now trading at 2242, down from 2460. Bitcoin back above 50,000. Been quite a better year for Bitcoin, man. Whew, can't overstate that one. You got Ethereum negative by 30 bucks or so at 4,094. Crude trading at 7355. We got the gold contract this morning basically flat. You're down a dollar at 1810 this morning on gold. Silver is flat at 2294. And we jump to notes and bonds. No action there either. We got the 10 year flat at 13018. The 30 year is positive by 12 ticks at 16028. And we jump over to the VIX volatility index as this market marches on. Boy, quite a spike in that VIX, whether you back things up to December 3rd, you back things up to where the volatility really began on the Friday after Thanksgiving, you back things up to just a week ago when the market was correlating to the lows that I just went over. As I pointed out, the S&Ps are more than 200 points above where they were trading at when you had the VIX spiking to a high of 27.39. Man, if you're trading those VIX, if you're trading those VIX products, like for instance, I know a lot of our traders like the UVXY, uh, you really get some volatility on some of these spikes. Now, I'm going to back things up just uh, 20 days or so, and you see how quickly some of these volatility spikes, man. If you're in these equities and you get some spikes, folks, and you're trading the VIX, I encourage you to think about taking those profits because it does not last long. Uh, now, yes, there's the possibility. If we really get you know, an extended sell-off that you could see some of those run, but boy, I mean, what are you looking for there? When you go back to the VIX, I'm going to put it on a three-year weekly to encompass the full run of COVID. I mean, every time we've gotten a high, folks, even going back to when we got the first COVID spike. Now, that's a lot of weeks that we went up there, right? It took us four weeks to get to the high on the VIX. Took us about eight weeks to get back down to June 1st, maybe even 12 weeks or so where we had a 24. You see the lows that we had. We'll zoom in on the action. But boy, quick spikes, quick pullbacks on each occasion. It does not last, folks. Now, in context, it does not last when the market continues to march to highs. Yes, there's a possibility you could get an acceleration if we get an extended sell-off, but there is no reason for an extended sell-off just yet. Look at this chart of the S&P when you talk about the channel line, folks. Uh, very well defined. I'm going to put it back on a daily. I'm going to zoom in on since we had COVID. And as you can see, even taking it off the bottom. Now, yes, this does not come off the bottom. I talked about it many times, but if you're trading the markets, you're trading the futures, you're trading the indices, I would keep it on your radar because it's something to keep track of because each time we've either gotten near the top or the, border or, or the bottom portion of this trend line in the S&P, you've seen either support or resistance. And man, this is quite a line. If we ever carry this into the next year, you're talking about a price level that will blow people away. So I imagine that 
at some point, this is going to cause a little weakness through this channel line because, I mean, you start pushing 12 months into the future, folks. Let's just put it back a year now. This channel line went from 3,600 to 4,600 over the course of a year. You extend it out another 12 months, you're going to be pushing from 4,600 to 5,600, that or thereabouts, right? I mean, you see the, the angle of this trend line. If you stay in that trend line for another 12 months, man, we're talking about another, what, 1,000 points, another 20% gain almost in the markets. I'm not sure the market has that in it after year after year of these gains. But guess what? They didn't think it had it this year as well. And nonetheless, the market charges forward. We're talking about 26% or something like that. We come into the year. Yeah, we come into the year at 3,600. We're closing out the year at 47.33 right now. And we got five trading days left to go in this market on the S&Ps. You jump over to the Qs. A little bit of a different story in the queues, but I'm going to back things up the same deal. Now, this trend line I like to follow in the queues starts really uh, last year when we got the, the market taking off from whether it was the vaccine efficacy numbers in November. We got the election that we got passed uh, in early November um, of 2020 as well. And you take a look at the queues, man. It has been well defined up to the top portion, to the bottom portion as well. OK, we did get slightly above there to 408.71. You got down to... 378, but keep your eye on that chan channel line in the queues as well if you're trading those tech stocks. Uh, getting near the top portion of there, but you're still about 10 points away in the queues if you're going to bounce off that top portion of that trend line. You see, whether it was back in February, right, whether it was back in September, got above that area before recoiling in November, and you see the four times we've had this thing touch the bottom, right, all the way a year ago in October, March of this year, May of this year. October of this year didn't quite get down to that level. I'm sure you had some people looking for a bounce. Didn't quite get there on the run that we had starting last Monday. But nonetheless, you're trading at 396.92 right now on the queues. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks as we got one week of trading to go. Uh, we'll kick it off with Amazon. <coughs> Excuse me. That's a little bit of a longer term time frame. Let's back this off for some clarity. Uh, and this encompasses the full run from the COVID lows. Remarkable, you had Amazon trading at 1626, I think. 162603 to be exact. Uh, your consolidation area, which is pretty cool on Amazon, you got the bottom portion there, just about 3,000 on my chart. I got the 382 of the full run from last March, sitting at about 2959. And look at how it just chopped around there for a while. Uh, whether you're talking about back last September, back in November, Back in March of this year, got a little bit ahead of itself to 37, 30, 73. That's when Jazzy took over, if you recall. They come out with their earnings in August. They tell the world that they might not even make a profit for the holiday season because costs are going up. Remarkable, a company like Amazon with the tens of billions of dollars that they take in. It's almost going to be hundreds of billions of dollars they take in on a quarterly basis. Uh, and they can't even turn a profit. But to their credit, if they get the job done with all the variables going on right now and they keep customers happy, uh, and I imagine that's pretty much the case because we're past Christmas. We're two days past Christmas and you haven't seen the horror stories online in terms of people not getting their presents. So it seems like they got it done, at least on the process portion of delivering. We'll find out how much they had to spend to make that happen. We got Amazon right now up about 17 bucks. We jump over to the big dog, Apple shares, 176.28. As of close Friday, we put it on a 15 minute, a little bit higher this morning with the market from micro, uh, Apple. We jump over to Microsoft shares. Microsoft's going to pop $2 on the open. How about that you get the nasdaq 100 up 76 points stay tuned folks we'll be right back in three minutes everything in the universe is governed by the fibonacci sequence this mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market to stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of sign up for the fibonacci 24 7 newsletter at tfnn.com when you subscribe you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader larry pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to and you can trust larry's analysis after all he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got 12 minutes to go into the open. We got the S&Ps up 12 points right now. We jump over to Alphabet shares. Google, quite a year. We're talking about 29.71 on Friday. We put it on a three-year weekly to talk about this acceleration. COVID lows at about 1,000. You came into this year, though, uh, at 17.50. You're going to close out the year at almost 3,000. You're pushing right up against, I believe, the $2 trillion mark. Let's pull it up. one99 Five nine trillion dollars for Google shares at twenty nine forty two. Uh, interesting. Just talking about some of those valuations here on CNBC. Stocks up almost seventy percent this year, right near two trillion dollars. By far the best performance of any of the big tech stocks. And man, they get some big numbers in here in terms of the numbers. Microsoft. 51%, Apple 33%, Facebook, now Meta, we're gonna talk a little bit about Facebook too later in the program, up 23%, Amazon, it's been a consolidation for Amazon after accelerating big time early on in the pandemic, you got up 5%, Tesla's up 51% on the year after pulling back, NASDAQ 100, up 27%, Alf, Al, excuse me, Alphabet, they're an advertising company, majority of their revenue from advertising business, Proven resilient. Check out some of the numbers they're talking about, though. In the third quarter earnings report in October, 43% increase in advertising revenue to $53.1 billion. Imagine that. You're doing $53 billion in 90 days, and you're growing that business year over year by 43%. YouTube ad sales, similar jumps, $7.2 billion. Earnings top in estimates, man. You don't got to spend a lot of money to just send out ads when people are trying to service them. I mean, do you, folks, I found myself watching YouTube, which I do watch a lot, that now I gotta watch two ads, right? Now I gotta watch two ads, sometimes I can't even hit the forward button, right? They're changing here as they have more and more supply of ads that they can deliver. They're just saying, we're just gonna push it out to the public because we're getting paid for two ads now. You gotta watch two ads now sometimes when you're watching YouTube videos, uh, but man, Google, Alphabet, they are cashing in a big way for the full year. Revenue expected to climb 39% to a quarter trillion dollars with $4 billion left over. $254 billion full year revenue. Fastest growth since 2007. Google is growing at the fastest rate in 14 years. Imagine the size of the company back in 2007 versus the size of the company now. And really, I don't have a large position in Google at all. I think I have some. 
And, but the point being, it's remarkable numbers, folks, and and they're getting rewarded rightfully so for their share price because when you look at those types of numbers, you look at that type of growth, you look at the earnings, uh, staggering, staggering growth in a big way. And if you recall, last August, they were the ones that were supposed to be in trouble in terms of antitrust. You trade from 1750 down to 1400 you trade off $350 on that price point, and man, what a buy in that opportunity. That was below $1,500. you have doubled your money since the market took off back there in October slash November with Google coming into the year at 1750 29.42. Remarkable. Let's jump around to some of those other FANG stocks as I was finishing up. There's Amazon. Quite a different story back in this consolidation. Uh, I do have some Amazon folks. They are a lagger this year. But man, in the long run, I see a lot of success with less risk for the potential for that reward, right? I mean, there are many stocks out there, folks, that you can get a 10-bagger. Easy, as in, yeah, it's very possible. And I say easy if you want to risk the amount of times that you might go bankrupt to get that 10-bagger, okay? Let's say you want a stock that goes up 50% in a year. You want a exposure to a stock that's going to go up 50% in a year, you're dealing with some volatility that can go in both directions, all right? What I love about Amazon is you have the opportunity to go higher in a big way, even though you're a lagger this year, with the support of knowing that you're not gonna get a company, in my opinion, that's gonna tumble. I mean, right now, you're talking about a company that's valued for a company like Amazon at 1.7 trillion, yeah, 1.7 trillion. So you're behind all the big dogs. You got Apple at 3 trillion, right? You got Microsoft, they're getting up there as well, man. Microsoft. 2.5 trillion, Google's at 2 trillion, Amazon's only at 1.7 in that context. Uh, so on a contextual basis, just by pure market capitalization, 1.7 trillion, I mean, do you see, now, if there's pullbacks, folks, the multiples are gonna pay the price on many of these equities, but where would you see a company like Amazon cascading to? Do you ever see it going back under a trillion dollars? Now, that would be almost a 50% haircut, so we don't want to see that if you're a long-term investor. But you get the point. We're at valuations for that company. You consolidate for 14, 15 months. It becomes even more attractive. you got to find a base in terms of after the acceleration this company had because, remember, the rest of the market only started accelerating higher in really November when you had Amazon trading at 3,000. Amazon came into COVID at 1,800. Okay, so they popped before the market did because of their pickup on all the orders of people shopping online. I'm giving you the bull case, okay, but it's nice when you get that type of um, consolidation after the run up. And man, if you ever get a move again to akin to what we had, you traded from 1600 up to a price point of about 3500 Okay, you're talking about $1,900. If you take that same move, maybe you start from anywhere here, folks, you're pushing 5000 on Amazon. Nice round number. We'll see if that hits, but not out of the question when you think about that Amazon was trading at 3500 more than a year ago. Okay? Eventually there will be some pickup there I imagine to the upside after this consolidation. It's tried to break out of that consolidation a couple times and pulled back. Uh, right now though Amazon going to open up about 13 bucks. Now, let's jump into Facebook. Facebook shares Quite the pullback for them recently from 384 all the way down to a low of 299.50. You've popped a bit from there. You have Facebook up about $3 this morning from 335 to 338. You're still going to be almost $50 off the highs. You came into 2020 at a price point of 271, though. So still a nice acceleration with the market up to 335. Now I bring up Facebook. Because one of my Christmas presents, folks, uh, was Oculus Quest 2, the virtual reality headset. Uh, from Facebook's Oculus. And I got to tell you, it's pretty cool, man. Uh, I give Facebook a lot of grief. I am not a fan of Facebook itself. Folks, it fosters like the worst thinking imaginable. It's a cesspool of negativity, in my opinion, Facebook overall. Uh, yes, there's some good areas of Facebook in terms of sharing pictures and the likes. Most of it is just people complaining, talking politics, talking everything they don't like in life and ranting. But man, if you haven't tried one of these headsets, folks, I encourage you to go out there and try it, even from an investor perspective, because the the way that you feel immersed in the environment that you're in just by putting on a headset was pretty mind blowing. That's what I kept trying to share to the people around the house during the holidays. Right, I say you got to just look in here to see how immersed immersive. The feeling is that you put on a headset, you have two hand modules that you can hold, so you can see your hands in front of you when you have the headset on, and you're in an environment 
that actually changes how you feel in terms of a 3D basis. Uh, it really made me change the way, yeah, bye, bye, bye. It really made me change the way I thought about uh, all that. I was talking to my dad. He's over there uh, chatting in the Tiger's Den. Now, here's the disclaimer from an investor perspective. Uh, Zuckerberg's a believer, and, and now I can kind of get a glimpse why. But man, if you're a believer, I imagine you can spend so much money on this technology, it might scare uh, the heck out of market participants because the, the, the step you have to get to is the final step. And they're talking about it already though. You heard it, maybe you got a suit that you wear so you can feel everything, right? Maybe you're sitting there on a treadmill so you can actually move in your 3D environment. Uh, five or 10 years down the road, I imagine, folks. Whew. But I encourage you to check it out because it is pretty cool and it made me rethink uh, how I will look at Meta going forward. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back for the market open. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got a record open in the S and P's, forty-seven thirty-five. We're trading right now, forty-seven thirty-two. Tech stocks higher. Nasdaq one hundred up seventy points. The Dow up eighty-four. The Russell up about three points right now. You jump to travel stocks, though. Not quite the same scenario. Travel stocks. Quite a weekend, man. Unfortunately, and this is where, folks, you're seeing it. That no matter what happens in terms of just getting things set up there. Excuse me. Uh, no matter what happens with shutdowns, etc. These flare-ups are going to have economic impacts. It's remarkable we get the market sitting at all-time highs when you cannot deny that we just had 2,800 
flight cancellations. 2,800 over Christmas weekend. These poor people, uh, as in almost 3,000 flights. Imagine the, 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 the problems that created for people flying home for the holidays, etc. You got the airlines trading down lower, as you would expect. United's down 2.1. We'll pull up some of these charts. You get Delta. You got the cruise ships down as well. 2,800 over Christmas weekend, disrupting travel. Uh, you also had a winter storm in the northwest part of the country, adding difficulties on Sunday. I was seeing videos of some friends out there. Uh, poof, I mean, just an absolute storm in a big way. The market will likely allow the situation a few weeks to play out to see if infection rates drop as they have in South Africa. Uh, and hopefully so, because the numbers are pretty, pretty harsh in terms of the way this thing is spreading. It does look like it's just going to rip through the entire population over the next 30 or 60 days. Uh, we'll see how that happens. Uh, but these travel stocks jumping around. There's American. You're down 3.4% on the open. And this is with an S&P that's up about a half a percent right now. All the market's catching a little bit of a lift on the open. You jump over to Delta shares, down 3%. You jump to uh, domestically JetBlue shares right now, down 3%. You jump over to Southwest, down 2.3%. We jump to the cruise lines, Norwegian, NCLH, down 5%. The cruise lines are always a little bit more volatile than the airlines. You jump to Carnival, down about 5% as well. Let's jump to some of the FANG stocks again, see how they're opening. Amazon slightly in the green right now. Apple up almost a full percent. Look at that. It's 178.09 on the open. We jump to Microsoft shares up two thirds percent. Tesla shares right now up more than a full percent at 1,078. All right. What else we got going on? Let's see. What do I got pulled up here? Yeah, let's talk a little bit of movies uh, with a dud and with a winner. You start things off with, and this is interesting that, you know, I have not been too in tune with movies besides the fact that there's a new Matrix out uh, and it's available on HBO. I, I'm not a shareholder on HBO, folks. I am a customer. Uh, bought HBO Max within the last year, partly because there were so many great movies that were coming out throughout the year, and HBO decided to offer their full slate of theater releases available on HBO Max. Uh, my friends have been seeing the new Matrix. They've said go see it in a movie theater, and they're probably right. Those are the types of movies nowadays that you may want to still go see in a theater. Outside of COVID, though, not sure I'm comfortable with unvaccinated kids still in the house. So these are the things that weigh on the economy potentially. Uh, but we're going to jump. Spider-Man's reached a billion dollars. So the possibility is out there. But here's where things get interesting, right? You have a movie like West Side Story. Directed by Steven Spielberg, maybe even produced. It says uh, Steven Spielberg's West Side Story, probably produced and directed by Spielberg. Failed to gain traction with audiences at the box office. 36.6 million in the first three weeks. Uh, a budget of 100 million. And that does not include marketing costs. Here's what I will say is I haven't seen any marketing. I don't think about this uh, West Side Story. Maybe I'm not around in the areas that they are marketing to, as in the channels. Um but they're talking about here, this is geared towards an older audience. And just like I was talking about, older audiences may not be quite comfortable getting back into a theater right now. Uh, you jump to a different story. Spider-Man with Sony and Disney uh, co-producing that. The first film to surpass a billion dollars, $1.05 billion for the global box office. Uh, and also claim the title of highest grossing. And the last film to do that was Disney's Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker in 2019. Now, I believe that Disney had something like eight different movies all grossed a billion dollars in 2019. It was some staggering amount of movies. Uh, and you see that last one we had was 2019. We get none in 2020. We get one in 2021 as we come into the last five trading days. So maybe that's a sign uh, that life is going back to normal. But as you see, things differing. When you bring a movie like West Side Story geared to an older crowd, you spent 100 million bucks to do it and you release it as unfortunately Omicron is spreading. Because remember, this is talking about three weeks, right? The market started flipping out on November 26th, the Friday after Thanksgiving. So you have this movie, West Side Story, opening basically for the entire news cycle of Omicron over the last few weeks. And there's no denying the way the ca these cases are spreading. Uh, I think Florida went something like two weeks ago. Florida announces their data on a weekly basis each Friday. Two weeks ago, we were at something like 3,000 positive cases for the entire week. Last Friday, now I'm going back like nine or 10 days, you were at something like 30,000, 28,000. 
and this most recent update, like 113,000. So over the course of two weeks, you go from 13,000 cases to over 100,000 cases. And I know that's happening almost everywhere. In the Northeast, I know it's happening. It's happening out West now. Uh, and the wave has come to Florida or immediately over the last two weeks. Uh, point being, back to the market, you can see how that is going to impact things uh, with a movie like this just absolutely bombing when you spend 100 million you only push out about 36 million at the box office does not include marketing costs etc uh compare it to the fact that the market is there just a different market spider-man no way home uh grossing a billion dollars they got two big actors in there tom holland and benedict cumberbatch two great stars over there i really like benedict cumberbatch he's uh he's in, been in some great flicks recently and yeah billion dollars okay what else we have happening when i got up here let's jump back to the market JP Morgan says investors are too bearish, does not see a stock sell-off. Strategists say market concentration doesn't indicate a peak. It's your bull case, folks. Uh, U.S. rally may become broader in January, according to a note, though, is their take on things. There's no reason to fear that the rally that catapulted U.S. stocks to successive records this year will end any time soon, according to J.P. Morgan. In fact, more investors may join. Conditions for a large sell-off are not in place right now, given already low investor positioning. Already low investor positioning at 4,700 and change in the S&P. Record buybacks, can't argue with that. Limited systematic amplifiers, not sure that that one will play out uh, correctly. Uh, positive January seasonals. Uh, investor positioning is too bearish. The market has taken the hawkish central bank and bearish Omicron narratives too far. So hang on to that one for a second, okay? I mean, I'm always trying to keep the spikes up on my back, folks, when you have the market up so much over so many years in the face of so much volatility and unknown. Okay, we're coming into quite an interesting time here that you have cases spreading and, more importantly, you have the Fed ramping up to raise rates and still curtail asset purchases. I mean, we are not used to rates rising in the way that they may over the next two years. How is the economy going to handle that? How are, you know, whether it's banks, just companies, going to manage the fact that capital is going to become much more expensive versus a 0% bond that we're in? And meanwhile, you have one of the best banks out there, JP Morgan, saying the market has taken too dovish, excuse me, the market has taken the central bank and Omicron narratives too far. Well, I bring that up as we go into the break right now, folks. We're about to break all-time highs to the tick as we speak. There's your daily. We're within three points. This is when the note comes out. I'm going to put an arrow in it, and I'm going to say JP Morgan said the market is reacting too negatively. Look at that. Can you imagine? Let's put that. I'm going to put that on that chart. The market's reacting too ne negatively right here at 4740. You get the point. Are we'll you in the market we'll for back. buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. 
will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps right now up 24 points. You're talking about right within record territory, got within about a point and a half of where we were in the open. Right now, you're trading higher by 24 points, half a percent in the S&Ps. You're trading up almost nine-tenths percent in the NASDAQ 100. We take a look at where we are there. You're talking about 300 points, about 330 points. 330, yes, 330 to be exact, 16,438. The highs, you back things up 11 days ago to December 16th. We're talking about a high there, 16,457, so just off that high. Be interesting to see how we react right where we are in the NASDAQ 100, because you see we've had about three different times that we've traded up to this price level. December 16th, we were up there on December 8th and 9th, also up there on November 29th and 30th. Uh, we'll see if we can plow through that level right now. Dow, a little bit of weaker action, only up a tenth of percent, and the Russell turning negative down three tenths percent we jump to commodities gold pretty calm action down about a buck right now you got crude off about 30 cents we jump to notes and bonds to see the action pretty tame action as well you get the 10 year up one tick you got the 30 year up five ticks and we get the vix right now 1871 on the volatility index okay jumping on to other stories that caught my eye this morning talking about robotics uh, on a grand scale, just interesting to try and wrap your brain around. So this article out uh, on Bloomberg, this excuse me, on CNBC this morning, the robot workforce isn't coming. It's already here. I would imagine, I would encourage you to try and think like this, folks, because when I'm making investments, especially for the longer term, it's the reason why I bring up Facebook five or 10 years down the future, down the road. It's amazing to think what these headsets are going to be like, folks. I'm serious. I'll pull the headset and show it. You've probably seen pictures of people. You've seen the videos, right, of people playing Oculus. They get all disoriented. Maybe they smack into a wall. Maybe they fall face first right on the floor. Uh, the future is coming. It's coming probably faster than we all think about. I just had a son. He's going to be 11 months old soon. Crazy to think about what the world's going to be like when he's 30, 35, 40 like myself, just crazy, let alone just five or 10 years down the future with self-driving cars very close. Robotics they're talking about here. Retailers, restaurants looking to robotics and other technology to keep up with demand in a tighter labor market, right? It's gonna incentivize the push even further when you're paying higher wages for human capital. If robots can do it, folks, you know, this is going to be the battle over the next 10 years in terms of how do we have a healthy economy for all, not just for stocks, when you have so many workers potentially displaced by robotics? Sam's Club uses robots to scrub store floors and can scan inventory. Uh, and Cupcake Chain Sprinkles has replaced traditional cashiers with self-checkout kiosks. That seems to be something that probably could have been done 10 years ago. Uh, diners and shoppers impatient and long-waiting periods of poor service welcome the changes. It's a fine line, though because we've all been in the grocery stores when only the self-checkout aisle is kind of possible. And I tell you that even with long lines, when they're trying to push people to those self-checkout aisles, especially in a grocery store where you may have a lot of items, sometimes it feels like that grocery store is being a little cheap. And maybe they should be paying for more capital for the amount of money they're making, as opposed to just forcing all their shoppers to run through the computer to check out. But guess what? 
that's where the future is going. They just got to do it in a manner uh, where the customer is happy. Now, what I want to look at here real quick is that you talk about Amazon. Okay, now this jumps through a bunch of them. I was looking at now Amazon has been using these for a long time in terms of their company. I started jumping around over the, the um, break. It's all the way back in 2012. You're talking about in five days, folks, that'll be 10 years ago, a decade ago. Amazon spent almost $800 million, and this is a decade ago, okay, to purchase a young robotics company called Kiva, or Kiva, Kiva Systems that gave it ownership over a new breed of mobile robots that could carry shelves of products from worker to worker, reading barcodes uh, on the ground, et cetera. Excuse me. Um, today, Amazon has more than 200 mobile robots working inside its warehouse network. And folks, this article, though, is from 2019. You're talking about two years ago. This article was written. You had them spending $800 million. Point being, basically, the, the, the wave is coming. Robotics are coming. A company like Amazon uh, you think about what they've been able to do probably over the course of 10 years owning the robotics company they spent $800 million for. It is mind-blowing. S&P is right now up 25 points at 47.40. NASDAQ up 120 and the Dow up 117. Let's jump around to what else I had in terms of taking a look at. Interesting article here talking about uh, other denomination besides the euros. Two decades after euro, billions in old cash is being hoarded, almost $10 billion. In phased out currencies is still unredeemed. They get a lot of cash underneath their uh, pillows somewhere. Now, it's interesting. The deadline to swap some of these is coming up. The deadline has already passed for some of them. Okay, so two decades after euros were first minted and distributed, billions in cash denominated in the national currencies that were abandoned remains out there. And you check out. So in the blue is redeemable notes and coins. Okay, so Germany's got a lot of them. There's a lot of notes and coins still in Germany that can be redeemed. And then you jump to the worthless areas, though, like Spain and Italy and France. Other countries aren't so patient. France, Spain, and Italy have all ceased exchanging old money. And still, still you got big-time money out there, 793 million euros in Spain. Italy, 1.2 billion. Oh, I see. That was 793. Yeah, it's Spain has notes. Spain has notes and bond, uh, excuse me, notes and coins to the tune of 793 and 782. Just kind of interesting to see how that shakes out. No real market impact. They're not sure exactly why it goes on. Uh, Eurocash was introduced January of 2002, initially used in 12 of the areas. Uh, Central Bank is now pushing ahead with plans to devise new bank notes, and they're going to be designed by 2024 over in the euro. All right, jumping around to China. Diddy shares slumping after insiders blocked from selling stock. Just another reminder, folks, that you are at the whim of the Chinese regime over there. If you were trading these companies, doesn't mean that you can't make money. But boy, you're dealing with variables that are very hard to quantify over there. We jump over to Diddy. You're up half a percent, actually. You were down to 538. You claw back some of those losses. But yeah, we just had the daily up. That is quite a demise from their IPO to 18. I mean, look look where this has traded, even from when you recalibrated from 15 down to 12 on the first news of there being problems potentially with what's going on. You're trading at 563. This thing just keeps sliding. I mean, we jump over to some of the other shares. Alibaba, you're up 2.38% right now. But back in February, you're trading at 274. You're trading at 121. If I was trading any of these, I would just do it very short term. All right. And just like that. Did we get there? We did. We got an all-time high print in the S&Ps right now, 47.44. NASDAQ up 122, but S&P, let's check out some of the FANG stocks and see how they're trading. Apple's going to help when you get the biggest company in the world up 9 tenths percent at 177.89. Second biggest company in the world up 9 tenths percent as well. Microsoft at 337. We jumped to Google shares up 6 tenths percent. We jumped to Amazon up half a percent. Facebook I guess I'm not the only one that got uh, Oculus for Christmas, maybe. Facebook, look at that pop on the open, man. I should have been buying on the open. That was the plan. Uh, from 338 up to 343 for Facebook shares. You're up 2.5% right now for Facebook. All right, folks, we got record prints on the S&P at 47.45. Stay tuned. I'll come right back to finish up the show.
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up 25, NASDAQ 100 up. 113 right now, pulling back a bit from the high spike we got on the open. The Dow catching a little bit. You're up 117. The Russell, though, negative territory to kick off the trading week. Jumping back to that story from Diddy, because it's a wake up, folks. Basically, they uh, Diddy slumped on Monday. We pulled it up, though. It's actually already back to positive. Uh, current and former employees of the firm have been banned from selling any of their stock indefinitely. And this comes right as employees... Uh, are set to be able to sell stock on Monday at the end of Diddy's 180-day lockup period following its June IPO. And uh, we took a look at it. It is pretty remarkable, folks, when you think about... Sorry. Uh, when you think about that, maybe there were some that were saying, you know, it's really unfortunate that we had to hold this for six months when it traded from 18 to 561, but at least 180 days is over and I can cash in on my shares that I've been waiting for an extended period of time. And China says, no, we're not gonna allow selling because we don't do that in stocks that we need not to go lower. Uh, nonetheless, that would never happen in America, thankfully. And uh, it's happening over there. And you should be worried because they are manipulating shares to trade above where true supply and demand would equal, folks, okay? That's the real lesson there, that they're trying to manipulate shares to trade higher by using rules as they do but that doesn't always play out well because the market can sometimes be stronger than those forces. Uh, nonetheless, 
just a heads up. All right, we got the S&Ps up 24, folks. Quite a remarkable acceleration when you look at where we are. We jumped to notes and bonds to finish up the show. Pretty tame action on a five-minute basis. A little bit of a lift from where we were at about 6 in the morning. You're up about 6 ticks right now on the 10-year. We're trading at 130.19. You jump over in terms of the yield. You're talking about 1.48%. The yield on the 10-year ten ten pretty flat in light of everything else going on. All right, folks, thanks so much for starting your Monday off with me. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman. Uh, yes, Basil Chapman. He's coming up next with the Tiger Technicians Hour. Fast market at 12. Uh, we may have a couple replays because of the holiday, folks. But Tom O'Brien, my dad, he's coming up live at 3 o'clock to wrap up the trading day. Uh, stay tuned, folks. We got our man Basil Chapman coming up now. SPs right near record territory, up 25 points. Have a great Monday, everybody.